Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our Thursday Live. I have my running shoes on today because I literally just ran into my house. It's lovely to be with you. It's lovely to um, be able to spend time with you and to share some creativity. We haven't packed away anything behind us. I hope the house is neat and everything is fine. I am Nadine Forsler, better known as Mama Choco, and I'm here to give inspiration and to inspire you to do something creative. Um, I've had a lovely meeting today with our partner in Mauritius, something new happening in Scotland. So I've had a creative and fun day. We're busy preparing for a YouTube series and we've been painting Lose a Storm in between all the admin responsibilities happening. I had a lovely guest visiting our St. Francis store yesterday, Cookie van Kroenstadt. Thank you for my beautiful choco painter, Tommy Takis. Um, now, if ever you are in Kroenstadt, be sure to go and attend a workshop with Cookie House Stunning and all done with choco. And then something that she does afterwards, some advice, is she rubs um, candle wax candle onto the dry painted tacky surface and then she heats it with a hairdryer and it's completely stained and waterproof. How beautiful! Um, today I'm going to share some inspiration and create something that is practical and use, usable, something that you can use in in your own kitchen um, or it can be a de decorative item outdoors. What we are going to start with is a MDF round board and we are going to start the process by painting it with Davet. Now for those of you that are new to the Choco family, Choco is completely focused on job creation and empowerment and this color represents a person. I'm going to pour some of the Davids in a plate. I've mentioned earlier that I, I seek for excuses not to make food, um, but rather to spend time being creative um, with choco paint. So I'm using a plate. I can wash it in, in um, some warm soapy water afterwards and make sure I just clean it properly, but it is food safe. We are actually going to make something that we can serve food onto. So first step when working with a foam roller, and it's actually questions we received in the store over the weekend as well, is make sure that the paint is evenly distributed on your roller. And I just forgot to bring a paint tray from the shop. So you remove excess paint from the roller but the paint is evenly distributed everywhere. Now when working with a foam roller, on the surface that we are going to paint, we actually can create texture, because you will see later, we will do a wash technique, and I still need a cloth for that, a damp cloth. Um, I'll get one now. But, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to paint with my roller, and I've mentioned it many times, but. A foam roller is something that's temperamental. So I don't overwork it. You don't want to roll and roll and roll all over on the same, on the same place. That is when a rough texture will occur. I'm just gently rolling. Can you see? No aggression. Yeah, the day has been busy, but I am using this time, being creative and enjoying every moment there are. So I'm Gently rolling, not overworking, air bubbles appear, that's quite normal with a foam roller if you want to get rid of the air bubbles. Don't press hard, I'm going to show you now. It might be difficult to see in the light that I'm working in. But I am going to, Kaylee, maybe you can get even a, a, a kitchen towel, any, any, any cloth here yeah, at the back. Okay, Kaylee's quickly going to get a cloth. So I am nicely, evenly painting, removing light pressure. And what I do 
is I just remove the air bubbles. This is a first coat, light pressure to remove the air bubbles. I'm not pressing hard, I'm not creating texture, and this is my first coat. I will now allow for this to dry completely. Very important step. Always wait between coats before you start applying the next coat. And then I'll apply my second coat. Now over here, I have my second coat. And then what I'm going to do is a wash technique. So a wash technique happens with a piece of rag, mutton cloth. There's a scissor. Oh, so here's a piece of mutton cloth. Okay. Next very important step is I'm going to wet it with water. Kaylee, okay, don't even worry to cut more. You can just come and show the close-ups. Okay. So I'm going to wet it with water and then, as I always mention, color is a personal thing. So you will work with colors that works in your space, that makes you happy. I'm going to wet it with water here behind me. And I press and squeeze the mutton cloth to make sure it absorbs moisture everywhere. I also squeeze out excess moisture, but it's more damp than dry. What I'm going to do next, a stunning technique for a wall surface, a stunning technique for a furniture piece. It just gives a subtle mottled finish to a surface. Now, very important when we do paint techniques is to work with contrast. So over here, I've worked with Dovet, which is an antique white color. And I'm going to wash with Lady Lisa. Now, Lady Lisa is like a beautiful brown, muted brown, stunning color. I've actually painted the walls in my bathroom with Lady Lisa. Um, I'll take you through my bathroom. Um, maybe not today, but next time, so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, so now, if there's time today, I'll go show you. Okay, so what I've done is I've spread the paint nicely, evenly onto my damp rag. I fold the rag like a ball in the palm of my hand, but I ensure that it's nice and even. I press it flat with my free hand, and now very lightly, I'm going to work in circular motion and wash my surface. So this is a wash technique. You can't do anything wrong. After you've done your first coat and you feel that you want to mute it, you continue washing with Dovet on top, but only once the first coat has dried. So I Make sure I do it evenly. We have a very, we have an overcast day. So I'm working with lights in the kitchen and you will see shadows on the surface, but the technique needs to make sense. Okay, so once it's washed, just to get rid of all the, all the dawnsies, I will just allow for a few seconds for that to rest so that the color and the paint just settle. I will move my rag to a cleaner section um, and then very light pressure, I will wash again. You can also wash with more than one color. There's actually things in my house that I do want to show you. There are boxes and stuff lying around, but let's, let's do it so that you can see in, in actual, um, Kaylee, we're going to that wall. Try to not get the boxes in where we're busy packing for the YouTube series, okay. But if you look at this wall, so door, so what do I, floating shelf is, yeah, focus door. If you look at this wall, so there's divot underneath, there's shear of stone washed on there, and then lightly touched with divot again. So it gives a mottled, washed effect. And you can decide on how dark, how light, the contrast that you want on a on a wall surface. So that's done on a wall. Okay, let's go back, Kaylee. I'm plugged into into the phone so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. Okay, so this is this is real lifetime. Okay, you can see it's nothing nothing fancy. It's us in real life. 
Okay, so this is now done on a much smaller scale. And I'm just going to make sure that I get rid of all the And I just mute it by gently washing over again, just with my cloth. There's no paint on here. But what happens now, it just gives a subtle, mottled finish to my surface. Very light pressure. And you are in charge. Okay, wash is done. Now I'm continuing to the next step. So over here, I've already done this just because it takes so much time to do it. Okay, so here's my washed board. And what I've done on here, you can see afterwards, once that first step is dry, I've just gently washed with my divot again. Okay, colors, personal choice, you select colors that you love. Next, I'm going to apply masking tape. Now, I've already done this because it just takes so long to get the positioning right. But here's some inspiration. So I've applied my masking tape and the colors I'll be working with, this was completely not my choice. Um, I had no say in this, Maestro dictated me. So I'm working with Maestro and Olivia's Pale. So it's, it's a beautiful muted greens in our charcoal range that just complements any, anything. Now, tip. We want straight lines. You don't want the paint to seep underneath your masking tape. Another tip is if you paint onto smooth surfaces, like for instance, a varnish surface, glass, your paint needs to cure properly before you apply the masking tape. Working on a raw timber surface like we've just done, it actually absorbs the paint and it dries quickly, but smooth surfaces do take longer to cure. So there you need to make sure, wait to be safe, 48 hours, before you apply your masking tape, just to make sure the paint has cured and that the masking tape will not remove your paint that you have already painted. Now I'm going to, there are many ways of doing the, the, the straight lines. In a previous video that I've done during lockdown, you can paint a coat with your base color first, and then once that is dry, paint on top with your paint color. But I have a situation here. I don't have one color as my base color. I have a mottled effect. So I'm going to make sure that I don't get paint seeping underneath my masking tape. You do the following. I'm going to work with a stencil brush. And the same way we do stencil work, very dry brush, I'm going to, let me just see if this one needs to be Olivia Spell. I'm going to dry brush first my line that I want that I want to create. So no solid paint, then you can't actually allow for the paint to seep in underneath. So I dry brush first. Let's do my stroke there so that the color is just more darker and it just makes more sense. Little paint on my stencil brush. I've removed excess and my first coat is just a dry brush technique. Stencil, like you would stencil. I have also pressed down the masking tape quite well, rubbed it onto my surface to make sure that it's really um, adhering to my surface. Okay, so first coat is on. As with normal paint work, you allow for your first coat to dry before you start applying the next coat. So I'm just going to give it a quick blow. I do want you to see. Okay, and then I'm going to apply my second coat. So it will take a bit longer. I'm working fast because I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so you are going to be more patient. Make sure you wait longer. I just want you to see the end result. So 
once this has been done. Also, the next step with masking tape, don't wait too long before you remove it. Else what will happen is the paint dries on top of your mask, masking tape, it creates a film, and then as you remove it, it just lifts up everything that you have painted. So, can you see how straight that line is? Nothing could seep in underneath your masking tape. It's like perfect. More perfect you can't get. Okay. So tip, dry brush your first coat. Okay, so once you have done your line, so on the board I'll show next, you will see I've rotated, I've alternated between Maestro Olivia and Maestro Olivia. And here's one that has been prepared. So there's my board. And it's done and it's ready. Now you can decide, do I want to keep the line solid as is, or do I likely want to sand? I would rather recommend a 100 grit piece of sandpaper. I see I have 80 grit in front of me, so I'll just apply light pressure. Um, I just want to remove the squeak. So what I'll do is just lightly, let me actually, I'm going to tear off a piece so that I have better control. And I'm lightly, and sorry for the noise, I know it's right, to, um, very close to the mic. I just want you to see the difference between solid lines and sanded lines. Now stunning. And I can do the edges. Lovely for a furniture piece. Remember, we're doing this now on a small scale on a on an item that we are going to use. But lovely technique on a furniture item, um, even on walls, if you want to create that wallpaper stripe look, then you just work with a level, make sure your lines are perfectly straight, perfect, perfectly measured. And now the next step will be, and I'm actually going to do it on this one, I'm now going to use a choco paint stencil. This is part of the A4 range. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it on my surface, use some masking tape to secure my stencil that it doesn't move. Okay, once again, lovely technique for a furniture piece, and this is called layering. So we are, we actually. We are actually layering this item with different things. So there's a wash technique, there's lines, there's sanding. And now next we are going to stencil, but not with just paint. We are going to use um, choco paint. And we need matte black. So jy vir Suzuki vraag, hy het matte black gebring, waar is dit? Okay, so what I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use <laughs> so I am going to use my plate and then stencil of Paris. Now the stencil of Paris is a stunning product. Um, we've recently finished um, an entire um, holiday home for, for clients and we've created the most beautiful textures on their walls with stencil of Paris. I will send some pictures. So Zooks, will you look in the garage? No, it's not matte black by the garage. But you must hard to So Zooks, will you look in the garage? Yeah, you look in the car. Yeah, this is team effort. This is life. This is real life. Many things happening in one, in one day. Okay, so what I'm doing in this plate, I'm scooping some stencil of Paris. 
and how much this will be more than enough I'm just going to scoop some back because I'm not going to need that much so if you do stencil of Paris on a wall surface you actually can scrape it and we've done it on the TV show with Plank van Axie as well you can trowel it onto a wall wait for it to be dry and then do a wash technique like we've just done onto your stencil of Paris maybe first paint on top of on top of it once it's dry and then do a wash technique on top of the paint okay what I'm going to do you can you can stencil with it um, as is without mixing paint to it but I do want to mix some matte black to it so the matte black has arrived Suzuki sê net vir Jak hoe jy het het gekry, oor, anders gaan hy daar jylle garage omkeer. Ok, so this is matte black. Well, let me give it a shake. It actually says it on the instructions, but we never read it, do we? Ok, so I'm giving it a shake. And I'm unscrewing the lid. I just want to use a little bit thank you team for all the running around and what I do is I mix the matte black only a drop not too much else the paste will become too runny and it will seep in underneath your stencil I'm also going to show you a trick while I'm at it when I mix it like this the stencil of Paris paste will dry two shades darker than what I'm busy mixing here so just bear in mind it is going to be darker than this okay but I'm also going to show you another trick while I'm at it okay stencil of Paris on my scraper um, you can also use an old credit card a new credit card works like a charm I'm scooping my paste on my paint scraper and I apply it onto my stencil and please don't be anxious and um, if anything goes wrong you can just scrape it off wipe off your surface chalk or adheres to almost anything so you won't wipe the paint off and you can redo it you can decide how thick you want this um, application to be so it's completely your choice I'm making it nice and even okay. <laughs> and I didn't waste a drop because the editor of the home magazine once did his bedroom wall and he said he scraped the last bits of stencil of Paris out from underneath his fingernails to make sure that that nothing goes to waste and that everything is complete okay so there it's done I just now smooth it out to make sure it's nicely evenly applied onto my surface now look at this trick if I want to make sure that this is really dark when it dries I can dip my paint scraper in some paint and I can even with my scraper apply some paint onto my wet stencil of Paris and this can be like a piece of art you can do it solid or you can just do it here and there also if you want to do it with a different color that can be done okay are you ready for the reveal are you ready team <laughs> team choco okay now let's remove the stencil while the paste is still wet and how do I clean my stencil afterwards just water all chocos products are water-based so anything and everything can be cleaned with water just do it while the paste and the paint is still wet so um, 
for easier cleaning purposes and to look there how stunning this is. How beautiful is that? All the running around was at the end with our wall. Okay, let's lift it up, show it. This is now show and tell. How beautiful. Okay, now for a last piece of inspiration, what I have done is I have beads here. No, I can't say I have done it, Suzuki helps. And we have painted the beads, it was just normal wooden beads. We've painted it, Suzuki painted it with Maestro. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going in line with my last line, apply some hot glue from a glue gun there. I can just not put my board down, it's still wet. And stick a painted bead over there. And one over here. Let's do the other side without me damaging my creation. One over here and one on this side. So it's just my Rahobi glue gun. And one over here. And I have a beautiful serving board. It can be a cheese board. It can be something that you put in your bathroom with a succulent and your um, soap dispenser and a small towel. It, you can even put some handles on here. Um, and it's quick and easy to do. Okay, my message for the day, and it, it's actually something that we are all testimony of for today is we can make plans. Never be in dismay. As you've seen today, it was alive. There were things not ready, not because I didn't want to. It's just a bit busy. But we can make plans. Doesn't matter what happened in your life. And this is something I teach the team and my children daily. There are solutions to everything. Just hang in there. Look around you. The solution sometimes is closer than what you realize. And then I have a shout out. So um, when we started with Choco, 2017, we started marketing Choco. I traveled around the country and I did workshops. And um, I got, got so caught up with TV productions and um, all of that. And I've decided this year that I want to make myself available. I do want to meet you. I do want to meet the passionate users of Choco, the family members of Choco, the names that I see in replies with the Facebook posts, the people that in encourage each other and that has really formed a huge part of my life. I, you don't realize your contribution in my life. Um, so here's my message. I'm making myself available so that I can come to your town and inspire to do a workshop. I am not going to charge a fee for it. I might need some accommodation if it's really far. But what I need is the following. So we've had this idea to do, to do workshops this year and I understand having a business, I respect that I have one myself, that there are costs. But the shout out is if you have a, a venue in your area that will make themselves available um, to go and present a workshop between 80 and 100 people, because I don't know when I'll have time to visit your area again, so that we can touch as many lives and hands and souls while we are in that area. And then they can supply food and we will include the food cost to the ticket sale. We do understand that, that everything is a business. We, just, we are just putting it out there. Um, I'm going to make myself available to make sure that the workshop cost is 
as affordable as possible so that we can get as many people as possible and that we can join hands and share stories. So if you are in an area where you know there's a beautiful facility that will available them, avail themselves to us, I'm the instrument to inspire and to come and visit your area. So pop us an email. If you know of a venue and if you know that it's an area where we can touch so many hands and, and creative souls in one time, um, send us an email to support at Choco Paint. And Choco Paint you spell T J H O K O Paint, P A I N T, dot C O dot Z A. And then let's see, I'm not going to make promises that I'll be able to reach everyone, but I'm going to try my best. So this is my life's mission for this year. To come and meet you. Go. Okay. So if you if you if you up for it and you know of something, share with us and then let's see how we can make it work. We'll paint something amazing together and spend a day together. Okay, so let's make plans. Have a lovely week till we meet again. I'm in Joburg next week. I'm not sure that if we will have a physical life, but we will still share inspiration if I cannot be here in person. Thank you for the amazing support and stay creative and loads of love from the entire Chocolate team. Bye.